heavy. Bored. But all right. I mean, I don't know how much we want to go into, but yeah, how? We don't have to read this whole thing because it's very long. But everybody knows the first couple lines, right? Even if you don't know anything about poetry, I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked, dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn, looking for an angry fix, angel-headed hipsters burning for the ancient heavenly connection to the starry dynamo and the machinery of night. Like, oh, man, like already it's yeah. starting to kind of do that overwhelming. That's like the first kind of couple lines. And it's very much written like leaves of grass with these extended, long ass lines that don't even really end ever. That f- overflow <clears throat> right over and the no margin. Strict yeah. sentence structure. It's all huge sentences, like the huge winding sentences. Like I don't think well, there's a I mean, single period in this until we get. Uh, well, it's a list, right? Like yeah. it's long as shit and it's a huge long list. Um, I saw the best minds of my generation, basically, and then everything after that is who poverty and tatters and hollowed eyes, who uh, bared their brains to heaven, who passed through the universities, who were expelled from the academies, right. who cowered in unshaven rooms, who got busted in their public pubic beards returning through, you know, like who ate fire and paint right. hotels. Um, this addition, this addition, a, this addition, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very much listy, very much like Whitman. Um, and, and it this achieves sort of it perfectly. All encompassing view of like, I mean, we go back to Whitman, this idea of like the everyman, right? Yeah, but well, like who is else is like, kind close, of like the everyman like, of this particular generation, right? Yeah, so That's sort of what he's describing. And it's like a hundred years later. It's like a hundred years after Whitman published that book, basically. Except it's not even the everyman. It's the specifically the best minds of my generation. Um, I think it's it's much more. I think it's even more resonant now that I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness. Like just that line alone, even more resonant. Maybe it's always resonant. Maybe that's the th- like a universal yeah. that we're always think, searching well, for. Well, I think that's it, right? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, how I couldn't say much about this. I mean, there's just some favorite lines. I mean, listening to the yeah, crack well, of I mean, doom I on think, the hydrogen jukebox, like fantastic. Yeah, well, that's right. Like, I mean, that's the thing that he does so well. Like, puts together surprising language. Right? It's yeah. surprising. Um, Who lit cigarettes? Starving, and bo- hysterical, yeah. naked. Like, no punctuation in any of that until after naked. Destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked. I mean, like the way he sort of shoves words together in places, right? We see a lot of that. I see a lot of that in contemporary poetry. I think Um, he inspired it, this kind of the boundaries of the metaphor. I think Ginsburg was fantastic at expanding and pushing and kicking with everything he had at the boundaries of metaphor. It's like, what is the limit? How far can I go kind of thing before you have to start scratching your head, right? And I think he does it beautifully. He does it in a great way where he pushes those boundaries without succumbing to total rejection of structure and, you Mm -hmm. know, tradition and all the things that people claim to be against when they're doing some type of counterculture stuff. So I think that's really what gives this what, you know, when we did our Phillips episode, what they would call resonance. Why are people still obsessed with this poem so many years later? Why is it still selling copies? Like, why is every college student that's interested in poetry have a little copy of this book or at least read it or, you know, listen to a recording? It's also so damn the man, so damn the institution, but also God bless the institution because, you know, (laughs) there is no avoiding it. You know, like, I mean... And that is just all throughout this book, too. It's not just this poem. And, you know, throughout this book, we say, like, the sort of latter half of this book are later poems, I think. Or earlier poems, I mean. Um, Like, Howl, while being the first poem in the book, I think, is the last written in it. Right? I don't know. I don't know. I think. They have dates Um, on all the poems here, but I didn't go through to... uh check well because i mean just in the uh, so 55 to 56 was when he said they got how okay so maybe composed. yeah so from Howl up to in the baggage room at greyhound and then you do see you see a change so like the last maybe four to five poems are really different in style more um, traditional and they're yeah and they're earlier poems so you can definitely see a shift 
in style that happens in this book, but it's sort of backwards. Uh, it's not a shift yeah. in style that's happening from the beginning to the end of the book, but sort of in reverse. Um, who lit who lit cigarettes in boxcars, 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 rocketing oh, through yeah. snow toward lonesome farms in Grandfather Night. Heavy was, repetition. Yeah. Dude, and Heavy it just repetition. works so well. And, like, nothing's really been repeated up until that point. That's on page 12, and it just goes the perfect repetition. Oh, yeah, who it's still already so box, such box, a big box, repetition box, poem, box, though, right? Because it's like, who did this, and who did this, and who did this? It's a list. So already it has a really repetitive feel, even though it's not repeating specific language like that. Yeah, I mean, yakety, yakking, screaming, vomiting, whispering facts and memories. Like, I mean, just yeah. the sort of strings of like words that could replace the previous word right yeah screaming no vomiting no whispering <clears throat> like you know like like you almost want to add a no in between them right but instead it's just like screaming vomiting whispering all of these things that may not like quite belong together in one line and so it's stuff like that it's sort of I'm going to call this like a lack of restraint even though I know it's not because I've heard readings of this poems and I've seen I've like I and this goes for other poems too where like there are things that we've heard him read in recordings that have since been eliminated from the actual printed version um yeah. so it's not that he like entirely lacked restraint right no and I think that's but, why this is so good is that it strikes the balance between the unrestrained and the restraint but it doesn't it, but it poetry. feels unrestrained yeah. I think is yeah. the important thing it feels really unrestrained which is the beauty of it technically yeah. not right um, which is the and that's beauty very of much I think yeah. how Whitman feels however I feel about Whitman's poems and shows such a lack Heavy. of gratitude for life. Forward. I, I aspire to boredom, Heavy. I should say. Forward. Heavy. I am heavy, heavy, heavy. Forward. Has you night sweats and the day sweats, pal? Pal, I do. 